Hi. What is this? Is there a plane watch? I always enjoy that kind of like a video is called uh, this song sound like Garfield animation. Thanks for a lemon twist to pull it out. We should be waiting on like that kind of uh, kind of stuff. It's called Garfield Quickies Season 2 Garfield's in the Invisible Thin Line. It was still like a chapter 1 thing. I just don't know why you got this from, but I'm still stuck in the AI. Ah, I've done it! I've finally done it! A crazy sounding voice shout triumphantly. Why is it, dear? A not as crazy voice asked. Entering the room. I have success. I've successfully tested my most marvelous creation yet. Invincible paint. He exclaimed, holding a can of paint up high for his wife to see. Are you sure it's actually invincible? The women ask, examining what appears to be an empty can. Because it looks like just. A empty can to me. She adds, theorizing that her husband was simply off his medication again. Exactly! The male scientist shouts, picking up the paintbrush and carelessly loading his whistles with seamlessly nothing. One strokes an invisible paint, and anything it touches will become invisible to her naked eye. Watch! The scientist then wipes a paintbrush directly onto the pet hawk that he conveniently has for some reason up making contact with the bird. The paint makes it as if a portion of his body has completely disappeared. Ah! The hawk screech, freaking out that almost half of his body is gone. Fascinating. The female scientist exclaim, impressed by her husband's creation, and that he's not just off his meds after all. This will make us famous. Yes, indeed, Julie. But we must be very careful on how it is used. The male scientist warns, placing the can down next to the hawk. For if it were to ever fall into our wrong hands, the result would be more than catastrophic. Catastrophic. Why am I sounding like when I say catastrophic? It just sounds like I'm saying counterfeit. Say catastrophic three times fast. Uh, catastrophic, catastrophic, catastrophic. Then we better keep this to ourselves for the time being, thumb. Julie, advise, attempted to calm their pet hawk down. By handling it food. Who knows how the public would react should this ever be leaked onto the internet. Yes! And we must tighten up security all throughout the building. Thumb suggests. We need more security cameras at once. Ha! Ah! The hawk! S still flipping out over the missing a portion of his body. Suddenly... Wrap the handle of the paint can and flies out the window. Uh, we have the problem, Julie said, as the two stare out the window in disbelief. If we don't get that invisible paint back now, the world is doomed! Farm frantically shouts, the scientist blowing out the door to chase down the bird before something's really bads happen. Meanwhile, in a quiet, Superbin neighborhood, not too far away, the orange cat rests peacefully in the comfort of his bed. His teddy bear, Pookie, laying right next to him. Jesus Christ. Oh, Garfield! A voice shouts, interrupting the cat for his peaceful slumber. Guess what? Is it International Wake Up Cats World Day trying to sleep day? Garfield's axe. Sarcastic sarcastically. Nope. It's something even better. John exclaimed. Mom and Dad are going out are going on vacation for a week. And they want me to babysit their kid normal while they away. What? Garfield suddenly shouts. That's right. John said in 
with excitement. He's gonna stay with us for a whole week. Isn't this exciting? Romo, here. Garfield panics. Nope, 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 and nope. You guys have fun. I'm gonna go stay somewhere that as far away from here as possible until he's gone. Waving goodbye to his owner <laughs> as he abortion door. Funny, funny cat. Funny cat. Jesus Christ. Hopefully there's a nice Italian restaurant on the other side of town. Upon opening the door, he happily greets by John's parent along their kin normal. And maybe it should be she this way. You should hear it this time. Not without my AI. Hi, Garfield. Normal greets. <laughs> Garfield screams to a heavens before losing consciousness. Oh dear. Anna said, Dag name it, that's the second loudest scream I ever heard. James said, Mom, Dad! John is happily greeted his parents. How's it going? It's Garfield, okay, dear? Mrs. O'Buggle asked, concerned. Huh, he'll be fine. Come on in. John replies, dragging his cat back into the house as they all in head inside. A part of me screaming is not losing consciousness. I'm not losing my voice. I'm not. I I'm not saying that you are. All right. Uh, what are the R's? You. What? What are the R's? You overweight. I'm not overweight. I'm under twelve. What are the hearts? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, what happened? Garfield slowly opened his eye as he regained consciousness. His friend Odie and Arlene staring down at him. Garfield, are you okay? Arlene asked, concerned. Yeah, I'm fine. Garfield replies, getting himself back up. You wouldn't believe the nightmare I just had. John came up to me and told me that Normal was going to stay here for a whole week. I mean, what a crazy idea, am I right? Hey, Garfield! A euphemist sounding voice greeted him, slowly tur turns around. <laughs> Garfield! Spot the great kin standing right behind him. Wait, so this is a dream? The orange cat frantically asks. No one's actually here. Yep. No more replies. The world's cutest kin is here to stay for a whole week. Isn't this exciting, Garfield? That means we get to play and spend time together all week long. Seven days with normal. I, I can't fully possess this. Garfield says, feeling lightheaded. As he collapsed onto a floor again. Oh <laughs> uh, God! Odie oh, whimpers, gently shaking his uh, his unconscious body out of good, genuine concern for his friend. Why does he keep fainting like that? The kid asked. Oh, don't mind him, Arlene said, willing her eye. He's just being melodramatic like he always does. Wait. Who are you? Normal asks the pink cat. Oh, that's right. We've never met before. She realizes, approaching her the kin and offer a handshake. I'm Arlene. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, Arlene. I'm Normal, the cutest kitty cat in the whole wide world. He proudly <laughs> declares, <laughs> shaking her hand. The pink. Cat can't help but laugh at his adorable little self-proclaimed title. <laughs> you are rather cute, Neural, Arlene said. Thanks! You looking rather pretty yourself. Normal compliments her. Say, what's a good-looking girl like you doing hanging out with someone like Garfield? He asked. Well, I, uh... Arlene stammered, having no declare to blew out her entire background to just, to just anyone she talks to, especially to a kin she, she's just met. Sure, she did so with Penelope when they first met, but after the innocent between them, she... Decided was for the best 
to not make the same mistake ever again. Such such information will not being take advantage of flashbacks. It's a long story. She nervously replies. It's alright. I've got all week. Normal assist insist taking a seat on a living room couch. <laughs> Besides, it might be a minute before Garfield wakes up. Well, alright. After the moment of hesitation, that's what it says. The action of pausing before saying or doing some something. I just don't get that kind of shit. Arlene firing finally decided to tell him. Sitting next to him. Since he mo most likely going to visit John's house rather frequently. And the fact that he technically part of a family. She might as well let him in on her secrets. Jesus Christ. I was acting here. Don't worry, Mom. I'll make sure Nurmo is well taken care of while you're away. John says as he and his parents head out of the kitchen. Oh, thank you very much, sweetie. Out of set. I don't know what I'd do if anything happens to my precious little Nurmo. He'll be fine, John insists. I promise. He better be, James said sternly. Cause your mother will flip if anything happens to her. Kill this good cat into a hard red world. He adds in a mocking tone. Okay, got it. John says, checking the time on his cell phone. <laughs> I'm flicking the character. Uh oh, it's almost free. You guys better, better get going before you miss the, your plane. He's right, hon. We better scuttle on out of here. <laughs> James says as he runs, rushes out the door. <laughs> Wanted to get away from that annoying little kid as fast as po No. Don't, don't even assault normal. I know I like him. See you in a week, John. Anna says, giving her son a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> now, make sure normal get his... Get his good night's rest, and make sure to give them plenty of food, and- HURRY UP, WOMEN! Wow, the timing- <laughs> Mr. Arbuckle shouts for- from their tractor. WE'RE GONNA BE LATE! Alright, bye, sweetie! Anna quickly waves goodbye as she r runs out the door. Bye, guys! Have fun! John shouts before closing the door. Not too long after the couple leaves the house, Garfield once again regains consciousness, getting himself back up. He wops his head in pain as he spots his two friends and Normal sitting next to each other on the sofa. About time you woke up, sleepyhead. Normal said. Oh, please tell me this is just another dream segment. And I am sorry to sleep in the cover of my bed without him in the house. Garfold said loudly to himself. No. The kitten replies. This is as real as my adorable little face. Well, if that's the case, I'm out of here then. The orange cat declares, heading towards the door. Garfield, where are you going? Arlene asks. You can't stand just stand here with Michael Jackson! <laughs> Anywhere that's not here with him. I'll be back later, maybe in about a week or so. Oh, yeah, that's a part. Slam! And with that, Garfield heads out in the street, leaving the other three pets to ponder around his harsh behavior towards the kid. I actually like that fanfic. Sigh. Why doesn't Garfield like me? Normal ask, depressed. Am I just not cute enough for him? Uh, don't worry about it. Arlene assured him, placing a paw on his shoulder. He just had a hard time socializing with others. That's all. Well, at least, I hope that's a case. Spending the whole week with that spoiled little crap. Bad chance. Starfield censors himself 
as we wander aimlessly through the suburban neighborhood. I follow mail him somewhere as far away from here as possible. Maybe it's just somewhere like, I don't know, Abu Dhabi or something. Not too far from where Gar Garfield is, the hawk continued soaring through the sky. The cannon invisible paint still gripped it on his claws. <coughs> the bird shouts, landing on top of the tree where the orange cat just happened to be sitting by. Boy, all that walking makes me wicked really obnoxious. Garfield said, Oh, we feel tired of the all that walking for only five or so minutes. Grumbled. And I'm hungry too. Eh, maybe a hot dog vendor will swim by here after I take a nap. Cute. The cat closes his eye and fall asleep on a tree's butt. Unaware of the hawk staring down at him, way to f waiting to fly down and consume the unsuspecting feline for dinner. Did you call me a feline? Yeah, that's a part of that's a part of a fanfic. However, the tire bird start to lose its balance on a tree branch. For its feet grew tired for carry on the the heavy pan paint can for minutes on end. Soon enough, it let goes of a can, sending it and its contents falling straight down towards the sleeping cat. Bam! The paint can directly hits him. <laughs> Garfield shouts in pain, suddenly jostling up for his catnap. What was that? Hawk! The hawk! Shouts from the top of the tree, wondering where the cat has suddenly gone after dropping a paint can. Looks like I got myself a big bird to fly. Garfield sits, completely unaware of their invisible paint spilled all over his fur. Served it right for interrupting my beauty sleep. While the invisible cat climbs up the tree, <laughs> the hawk returns to his branch after failing to find his prey. Sinister. It sits comfortably, comfortably, and closes its eyes for a nice long rest. <laughs> I got you now, my pretty little bird. Garfield whispered, making it to the top of the tree as the bird drifts itself to sleep. Hmm. So I wonder why the part of him is missing. Before he can potter his question any further, he suddenly heard a cracking sound and. Snap! The branch breaks apart from the tree, sending an invisible cat falling all the way back down to the ground. Oh, that's why. These branches weren't designed with balancing overweight cats in mind. Garfield said, wiping both the dirt and grass from his chest. However, upon looking down to see his belly, he noticed that something looks off about it. Or rather, it looks like it's not even there at all. Huh? Where did my belly go? Garfield asked him himself, confused. And where are my hands for that matter? Flabbergast. By his body's sudden disappearance, the cat watches to find anything that has a reflection to convince himself he's not losing his sanity. Finding a nearby pond, he takes, it takes a good look at it. <gasps> but, uh, gasp. All of fucking shit, only to find nothing reflecting out of it, other than the clouds soaring above from the big blue sky. What is going on? Garfield panics. Am I invisible? Upon fully comprehending that his body is no longer visible to her naked eye, a diabolical plan begins to form inside Garfield's brain. Yes. The cat says with the invisible evil smirk on his face. Yay! Invisible feline! Back in John's house, normal Cascoli flips through the TV channel trying to find something that really is somewhat watchable as Odie and Arlene sit next to him on a couch. Hey, you guys seen Garfield anywhere? John approaches the couch to ask. 
having scoured the entire house looking for him. Yeah, he ate my guts, so he took off. No one replies, having felt dejected by older cat's rather harsh remarks e earlier. Oh. Well, if any of you see him when he comes back, tell him that I'm going to start baking cookies for all of us in a few hours. John says, as he returns to his bedroom, believe that his eldest cat are yet just left to blow off some steam for a while and will eventually come back as he always does. That's if he is ever coming back, the king says bitterly, having been trying to watch TV declare his mind from, from him. Little does he know, however, that the orange cat has indeed decided to come back to a house. Sneaking inside via the back door, he quietly tiptoed his way into a living room, whatever it was, making sure to make a little noise and movement from the kitchen door as possible. Normal, are you feeling okay? Pauline asked, becoming very concerned for Ken's well-being. Yeah, I'm fine. Normal butterly replies, not even bothered to turn around to look at her. Why do you ask? It's just, you seemed very excited to be here when you arrived. But now, you just... Arlene sits, having a hard time figure out what to say to him without offending. I just don't get why Garville hates me so much. Normal sits, finally turning his head to her. I haven't done anything wrong to him. I was really excited to come over here so that I can spend some time with him. But he's nothing but a jerk. He just as bad as my... As my... That's act right there. That's act. Despite trying to hide the tears forming in his eye from plate views, both the dog and female cat can clearly, clearly see them falling onto the couch as he breaks down into tears. Fought with concern, the older cats crawled closer towards the sopping kin. Oh, poor normal. You should feel bad for that little kin, Harry. I felt the same way. Mm -hmm. Shh, it's okay, normal. Arlene whispered to his ear, gently pulling him into a hug. Everything's gonna be alright. Garfield, who was secretly watching everything unfold, unfolding without them knowing, suddenly began to feel mixed emotions. He found his crying to be rather annoying, since he'd like he's likely just doing it to gain sympathy from from the other two pets. And yet, he also can't help but feel a bit sorry for a little kitten. As if he, because science with, was telling him to stop everything. And maybe he should start being nicer to him. Immediately after pouring that thought, he, he very quickly shook his head in anger. Now, this, this little brat is very old. He's terrible. And now that he's invisible, Faith has given him a perfect opportunity to scare the kids away for good and make him never want to come back here ever. What, what am I... Dude, again with this? What's your problem? I actually like that fanfic. You don't have to discriminate that kind of kid. Seriously. Now fully committed to the plan, he grabs the trusty blue blanket and wrap it around him. Huh? Odi turned his head all around the room, having just heard the strange noise. Odi, what is that? Normal asked, wiping a tear from his face. 
All three of them looked around, hearing more usual sound coming from the same room, despite them being the only occupants at the moment. Eh, it's probably nothing. Arlene shrugs. Oh my god! You need a guffer. Oh, I like that fanfic. That that, that hard. That, holy shit! Hey, <laughs> Meanwhile, Professor Tom and Julie race through the neighborhood in their car as they continue tracking down the missing hawk and the invisible paint. The bird must be resting somewhere, Julie said, paying attention to their invisible paint tracking device that her husband conveniently made just in case of such situation. The trail stops at this suburban neighborhood. How many times must have tell you, Julie? It's a hawk, not a bird! Thom angrily exclaimed, briefly taking his eye off the world. Two completely different things! You know, for some reason, they're just much wider reason. Drake and Josh arguing Murder avocado, which is a fruit or vegetable. SML, Junior, Cody, and Joseph arguing about the sun is a star or a planet. But with Professor Farm and Julie argues a hawk, where is a hawk or a bird? What's the connection? Hawks are tangly birds, Farm. Julie argues. Their parts are okay, family, which is the family of birds. I'm not gonna argue with you about this, Thom shouts. Let's just get the hawk and the paint before something terrible happens. You're the one who brought it up. Julie argues back. <sighs> I swear, there's no getting food that stubborn messy ones. He, mu he mutters for herself. Squawk! The car comes to a sudden stop as Thom slams on the brakes. There it is! Thom shouts, pointing at the particularly invisible hawk resting peacefully at the top of the tree. But where's the paint? Julie asks, she and her husband getting out of the vehicle. <laughs> I got you now, my pretty. Thumb idiot coldly shouts, startling the birds right, right awake. <laughs> the hawk flips up. <laughs> Upon seeing his owner, not wanting to be a test subject for yet another crazy experience, the bird lifts open its wings and hightails it out of there. No! Thom shouts to the sky, Come back here, you stupid hawk! Uh, I think we got a bigger problem here. Julie sets, pointing to a spilled paint can laying beside a tree. Oh, this is not good! Thom said, picking up the can. Do ah, you have any idea how long it'll take to clean this all up? That's not all. I'm afraid. The female scientists point at the small moving dot at the paint tracking device. Something else has been in contact with the paint. Something small. In that case, we better find it before it costs any harm. The male scientist shouts at as he and his wife heads back to their car. Garfield wait, waits patiently be, besides the couch, fully wrapped answer, uh, under the blanket. <laughs> Ugh. His friend and normal had already fold, uh, fallen asleep with the kin snuggling atop of Arlene, her, her her arms wrapped wrapped around him. 
now they're now that they're snoozing away in the living room, completely quiet. The invincible feline indi indicated indicates indicate the next phase of his plan. Ooh. I'm just bitching. Huh? Normal wakes wakes up, having just heard what sounded like a ghost. After a moment of silence, he slowly closes his eye, falling back to sleep. Ooh! Ah! The kin stalled back up, frightened by a much louder sound. Arlene. No whispers. Narching for her to wake up. N normal. Arlene awaking for her slumber. What is it? I can think that there's a ghost in there. Normal replies, shaking with fear. D don't be ridiculous. Arlene laughs, gently wobbling his back. There is no such thing as ghosts. <gasps> Odi joints awake upon hearing the sound of the ghost. Tampling in fear, all three parts of I anxiously gaze all around the living room, even spotting a blue blanket slowly coming up the couch. The, the, the ghost! My voice got to go out. Normal screams, frantically leaping out the couch and hiding beside it. Ooh. Garfield, Arlene said, not as soon with the slightest. This has got to be a dumbest prank I ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. Oli nods his head in agreement. Besides, you scare me normal. The female cat sternly points out, approaching a blanket. I think it's time you and I have a little talk at pulling away the blanket. Her eye widened in fear about finding out that there's literally nothing underneath it. Ah! The three animals scream on the top of their lungs and make a run for it. <laughs> Garfield snickers, trying his best not to burst out laughing, not to use Uber Dog AI. What was all that? Oof! John's falls to the ground after accidentally bumping into a three frightened pets. John, there is a ghost in the house. We're gonna run for it. Arlene frantically shouts, Guys! John tried to speak. <coughs> Odi frantically barks, Guys! Please protect us! I am too young and cute to die! No more frantically shouts, Guys! John angrily shouts, which caused them all to stop panicking. Now! Calmly! Someone tell me what's going on! Look at the ghost in the living room. Normal set. Pointing towards the blanket. John walks over the couch to the couch and grabs the blanket, to which he sees nothing out of our ordinary. Really? A ghost? John acts unimpressed. But but it was right there. Why honor Garfield's blanket? The fine kin insist. Guys, there's nothing to be afraid of. John says, holding up the blanket. There's nothing here. Bam! Oh, yes, there is! Professor Fum shouts, kicking down the front door. What the heck? John asks, startled. <laughs> Spy of two <laughs> scientists suddenly barging into his house. We're terribly sorry for son barging in like this, sir. But we've decided a trace of invincible paint in this house. Julie explained, showing the, the tracking device. Invincible paint? John asked, realizing what may have truly cost a pet. To suddenly start panicking. Yes, 
and we must find the small creatures and watch off the pain before more chaos ensues. From Oops. <laughs> Following a signal as the scientist led himself into the kitchen. So, it was a paint that makes me invisible. Garfield says, realized that the paint's mud spilled onto him when a can fell white on top of him. I can't let those wackos take away my power just yet. I still gotta scare away Normal from this place for good. He then said to a weeder, trying to sneak out of the back door. Is, it, is this some kind of like, what's it called? A fourth wall joke? Yeah, I did that all the time. <laughs> there it is! Julie exclaimed, pointing at seemingly nothing. Oh, sure. <laughs> Godfields makes a wand for it through the pet door. Quick! After it! Thom shouts, running after him from the back. John and the other pets watch as the two scientists chase an invisible feline all over the backyard. This is an unusual sighting, as without their proper context. In other words, out of context, it was looked as if it was the two psy psychotic people just randomly running around in some stranger's backyard. Gotcha! Thom exclaimed, some successfully catches him. Julie! Get the top ready! Hurry! I need. Julie said, running back inside, turning on the water in the bathtub. Not even bothered to ask the cartoonist for permission to use it first. As the cat struggled to get free, Thom raced back to the house and dropping in the bathtub, scrubbing and all the invisible paint off him, <sighs> making him visible to a naked eye once more. Get me out of here! <laughs> Garfield shouts, leaping out of the top, and she gets water off this fur. Let's just make it a floopy Garfield for some point. In other words, floopy feline. That's what he said. Looking down, he can now see his own belly once again. Oh, man. He said, disappointed. Poor Garfield. I'm terribly sorry about all this, sir. Thom, apologize. It's all good, Professor. John assures him. You guys see what you have to do, and I'm just glad we got the whole situation cleared up. Yeah, and things should have been much worse if we hadn't act in time. Or if the can has traveled somewhere else. Julie said. Indeed, Julie. Thom said. Now come. We must continue our search for the hawk. If it think it can escape their brilliant professor, farm huge. It's got another thing coming. We'll send the bills for your door. Julie assures the cartoonist as she and her husband exit the house. Phew. I'm glad that's over with. John sighed in relief. Meanwhile, the mysterious figure spot the spartacally invisible hawk flying over the city, throwing a sniper rifle. He carefully aims on his target. Bam! And open fire, sending it, sending it fall to the ground. Not even a core. It's just like a skeleton one. With the mysterious grin on his face, the small figure approached a now dead bird. We got it. And I finished reading a goddamn fanfic. Give it the claps for a J of this one eight six. Yay! Yay! Uh, funny thing, yeah, by reading the Yay! fanfic. 